should uh, this kind of a, a similar question? Should should colleges require classes on science literacy for non-science majors? My daughter and I always have this argument. So I say yes. <laughs> she says no. No, I say maybe. I think again the very construct of that question implies that there's this aspect of life and then there's something else called science. Mm -hmm. And there are these people who say, I'll never need to know these trigonometric identities while they're talking on their cell phone, you know. Well, this comes from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Somebody invented this. Somebody, they say, well, I don't want to be the one who, well, if you have the opportunity to learn, then learn. What, why else are you in college? I guess for some people it's, oh, it's a holding pen until they get out and inherit a job or something, but that's the wrong attitude. The attitude is never again in the rest of your life will your only job be to learn. Think about that. What a luxury that is. Yes, many college students have jobs where they earn money, but your duty in school is to learn. That's all. And uh, that should be something embraced, even cherished. And part of what it is to learn is to understand the world around you on all fronts. I'm upset, upset overstates it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm upset that if I go to a party and I talk about something scientific, the, you know, the, the liberal arts folks said, oh, you're, you know, will joke about how they were never good at math. Yes. Now suppose, suppose I go to one of their parties and then they mention, they talk about Shakespeare or something or some novel they read and I say, oh, I was never good at nouns and verbs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be laughed out of the county, chased out of the county as some kind of ignorant dolt who's, and so why is it that we have a tolerance for chuckling over not being good at math, but not a tolerance for for the rest of what one considers to be, that you'd have to have to be fully educated. And that's an imbalance that I wish were different. Now, should you be scientifically literate? Yes, because science is a fundamental part of life. But the fundamental course that should be taught is not, here's how to learn all the science you need to know in one semester. Here's what DNA, how your microwave oven works, how an internal combustion engine works, and here's what a nuclear bomb does. Yes, that's important because you have to vote on issues that draw from an awareness and understanding of these phenomena. But what's more important than that is how is your brain wired for thought? And that would be a course on critical thinking. So much of education is getting people, telling people what to think rather than how to think. These are two very different enterprises. What to think is, here's a book, learn it, you test it on it in the morning. How to think is, here's some ideas. Tell us how you interpret these ideas on the exam tomorrow. What do they mean to you? That's a different kind of brain wiring. It's the kind of brain wiring that an engineer executes, that a scientist executes. It's the problem solving brain wiring. It's the skepticism that comes out of trying to solve a problem. Stephen Hawking is apparently betting that the LHC is not going to find the Higgs boson. Do you think he's going to lose? I think if the Higgs boson is there to find, then it will find it. Okay. So I bet even odds that if it's there, they will find it. even odds it will find it. Now, it's one thing to build a big ex experiment and look for something that you predict will be there. That's exciting. If we discover it, there'll be Nobel Prizes all around. What's even more intriguing is if it's supposed to be there and you don't find it. That's more fun because... That was my next question. That, 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 well, that's, that's the funnest thing ever. There's this misconception held by the public and I think led by journalists, dare, dare I say, that Scientists just like sitting back in their chair, legs up on the table, basking in some deep understanding of the universe. But that nothing could be farthest from the truth. We are active research scientists, or on the frontier between what is known and unknown. We bask in our ignorance. Because it's the ignorance, the zone of ignorance is where discoveries come from. 
So you're not making discoveries unless you are, you are flat-footed standing in a field of ignorance. And some of the best discoveries to come out of fields of ignorance are those that, have to, that force us to readjust prior understandings of the universe. And often when you do that, the tree shakes and new relationships reveal themselves. Other things that had been left unexplained for so long all of a sudden become understood. And so maybe the frontier particles physics need a, needs a tree shaking. Mm -hmm. So but in either way, it would be exciting in either case. Um, in the last year or so, some of the world's top scientists in climate and evolutionary biology and, and acquaintance of mine, even on the IPCC, have been subjected to death threats. Uh, and even the, uh, one of them has an investigation by the Attorney General of Virginia underway right now that the AAAS called a witch hunt. If Galileo were alive today, would he think that history is repeating itself? Uh, yeah, if Galileo were alive today, uh, first I think he'd be impressed with how far we've come. Uh, he'd be disturbed by the resistance that he would see to what the methods and tools of science reveal about our world. We live in a world, and maybe it's because, it's, maybe it's the consequence of a free society. Maybe that's some of the cost of living, living in a free society, where people think what they want. Now here's what happens. If you think what you want, and what drives what you think is because you choose thoughts that make you feel good, if those feel-good thoughts fly in the face of some objective reality, then you're living a delusion. And that's culturally, politically, and economically unstable. Because you're basing decisions on what you think is true because it feels good. Because you want to believe it rather than what is true. And you have a disconnect between policy and reality. And uh, so yeah, I think Galileo would be concerned that that was still going on. He probably want his finger back too, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, He's not alone among famous people of the time who had body parts removed. This is true. For the curiosity of collectors. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is kind of a same line, how should science respond to attacks that seem based on political or religious belief rather than scientific method? Well, I don't know if scientists have the power of influence to resist organized political or cultural attacks on the results of science. There's an old saying that every great scientific truth goes through three phases. First, people say they don't agree with it. It must be wrong. Second, they say it conflicts with the Bible. Third, they say that they've known it all along. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I, I don't know what phase you know, global warming is in right now, but it's, it's, it won't be the first time the, the greater public, be it politically motivated or culturally motivated or religiously motivated, resisted the findings of scientific research. It won't be the first time. And we've seemed to have survived it before, or rather, the world has survived it, because this resistance doesn't happen world over. It's, it's typically regional. Mm -hmm. if, it, if, it, if America resists it in great measures the way it has in recent years, what will happen is that America will continue to fade from, this, from significance, mm -hmm. economic, scientific, technological significance on the world stage, and the center of mass of that progress will shift, as it's already shifting, into Europe. They've got the best collider mm -hmm. in the world right now, into the Far East, uh, China. Uh, look at their investments in science and technology. It, it dwarfs what we are putting in. So the consequence of this in a, in a, in a, in a free democracy is that we simply fade. And people need to understand the consequences of that behavior. So that's where enlightened leaders matters, because they need to see beyond whatever are the petty or local uh, reactions to scientific truths.